I'm Isander. And I'm Coda. And today we're going to be doing the Rogue Traders. The Rogue Traders. Get bent. How rogue are they? Also, I mean, get, get bent. Get bent. Get bent. Get bent. You put your thumb on the scale and it didn't change a thing. Hey, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I just, I'm joking. I, okay, I'm joking. I'm playing, I, I'm I said playing. not to I'm put playing. my thumb on the scale. I, I will not let my good name be slandered. <laughs> I asked nicely if we could see something about the abhumans. And and I will be fair to the abhumans. Uh, they kind of got hit with a steel chair because they're not the ones getting a video game. Uh, yeah, a video game just released. Yeah, that really helps them a lot. And I get it. Oh, uh, Dark Tide probably did a lot of PR work for the Ogren, but like... It's more than just the Ogren. Yeah, yeah. So they, they've been sent to the Shadow Realm. They'll be back. Maybe someday. We'll see. And that does mean it's time for a new poll with the options being the Eldar, the Dark Eldar, the Imperial Knights, and the Imperial Navy. That's it. You know the rules at this point. You vote by sounding off in the comments. You can vote for or against whatever you want. It's out of my hands now. I see what you've done here. What? People have been asking for an Eldar episode, and by sheer proxy of... Only one can get eliminated. We'll have at least one Eldar episode. Pretty much. And if you don't know, the Eldar are space elves. The Dark Eldar are space elves, but frowny face. Imperial. <laughs> I would say they're more space elves, but BDSM. Yeah, but like frowny face, though. Um, Imperial Knights are chicks most, dig giant most robots. Pe- most BDSM people I have seen have not been frowny faced. And the Imperial Navy is the Navy in space. It's it's just the U.S. Navy in space. Those are your options. You get to choose. You can organize. You can not organize. Just sound off. It's it's all on you now. The poll is also up on Patreon where you can go vote. You can get twice as many episodes, priority voting, access to the Discord, and a bunch of other perks while helping us keep the lights going around here. So There is a lot of lights. Oh, God, yeah, there's a lot. It's a frankly weird amount of lights. <laughs> so if you want to help us continue making the show, get more of what you like, head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. For those of you doing that as I speak, thank you very much. For those of you already there, thank you. You, you've, you know already. You've been known. You know how this operates. And we are also on the st- Stupidly fast march to 250k, <laughs> which is the next goal I have decided that I know we will completely blow by and date this video soon. <laughs> because that's what happens to all of these goals every time I set them. Because as a Legion, we kind of just make things happen. We're, we're an army of movers and shakers, so let's go move and shake the things that make the machine gods happy. And with the machine god now satisfied, let's get into it and we're gonna take it kind of from the top on this one just because there may be some new people because of the video game so i want to be fair to them right and we're also going to talk about them specifically outside of 40k before we get into them within 40k because that's an interesting story in and of itself um, oh just like how the rotators as a concept came to be yeah pretty much because okay. in a broad sense 40k today is it's everywhere it's obscenely popular and that is all despite it being a rabbit hole with a very real event horizon there is a point of 40k where once you've crossed it you're done it's over it you're finished there you, is no you're escape in it now. and i think it's it's I, if i ha- it's different for everyone but the most general one is when you understand why there was a horse with a heresy you're done. There's no way out. You're finished. I'm sorry. It's over for you. <laughs> that Who her- is this horse and what heresy has he committed? Pretty much. Uh, that is irrelevant for this episode, though, because they it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter for this for this one. Uh, We're most, not going to mention the Horus Heresy mm, after this? Because these guys are older than that. Okay. They're very old, both in canon and outside of it. This is new for us. Yeah. Well, we I, I, I try. Whenever I don't have to, I try so desperately. We're treading new grounds. <laughs> to the best of my abilities, um, before, like way, way, way back, uh, they used to be the protagonists of the setting, actually. Really? They were kind of the main characters um, because 40K back then was, it was very different from the 40K we have now. It was way more satirical. It was way more tongue in cheek. It was honestly a little silly and happy at times, which is jarring. Jarring when you compare it it to how it is nowadays. Yes. Um, It must have had that uh, 90s uh, edgelord phase like uh, comics did that we mentioned a couple days ago. Pretty kind of, (laughs) kind of. Um, but 
But back then, things were great because it, I can't, it's, it's the 80s. It's one of those things that has survived. It was a time when the Testarossa was on everyone's bedroom wall. And if it wasn't that, it was an F-40. Those were your two state-mandated options. That was it. Uh, <laughs> mustaches did not have the god-awful reputation. They are fighting tooth and nail to beat to this day. People are trying to bring them back, though. I'll be fair. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're, it's, like I said, fighting tooth and nail. And the music was so good, it is still relevant to this day. We'd be playing Everybody Wants to Rule the World right now over what I assume is a nice edit of 80s movies, but unfortunately, copyright claims. Copyright, baby. Copyright claims. Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> it is mind-boggling, though, the amount of stuff that has survived from the 80s and is still very relevant today half of my spotify playlist is 80s music <laughs> a lot of modern a-list actors were still there in the 80s dude <laughs> like there's quite a bit of the 80s there's some venom to that decade because mm -hmm. it just it's the decade that won't quit um and it wasn't just that because 40k came from there and it is still going despite <laughs> having tons of competition that has just vanished into the e back Poor then battle tech <laughs> back then it was just an expansion of fantasy stuff it was just okay so there's like 10 people who want fantasy in space probably so let's just give it to them it's whatever it's gonna be for those five people in the corner and this will never ever become a real thing <laughs> <laughs> and the reason in specific that these guys took center stage is because it, it kind of played a bit like D D back then and you need somebody who has a good reason to adventure, but in space. And so they began life pretty much as just explorers employed by this empire to scour the galaxy for new planets to add into the fold. That's pretty much it. To give you a sense of scale for how different things are, the emperor was kind of just a guy. Just a guy? Really, really powerful guy, but still just a guy. Still just a guy. Not, not the deity borderline we have today. Just a regular-ish guy. Regular-ish. Um, <laughs> usually... It is not a 40K episode without at least ish. one ish. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> usually these rogue traders would be looking for places to add value. Places high in minerals, resources, flora, fauna. It doesn't matter so long as it's helping the generic large space empire because it's a generic large space empire. You know this song and dance. They want to get bigger <laughs> as... Mm -hmm. empires do exactly so picture rogue traders back then as just the adventurer you play in like the standard adventurer in most role-playing games where you're really powerful you're clearly unique and you kind of should have independence to operate on your own because you're competent but critically you're not so unique or so competent that you just took over the setting already mm -hmm. it's it's a goldilocks zone you know of like because even dnd characters even your level one dnd character is remarkable compared to your average person and then very end level 20 it's like oh wow so you can just oh, cast wish now you, you are you it's are great. <laughs> you are a demigod <laughs> exactly. wow rogue traders kind of fell into that for a little bit and that is the skeleton the bones of the rogue traders as they are today obviously i don't know if you've looked around check a clock it's no longer the 80s <laughs> despite the fact that top gun was a top selling movie last year <laughs> it's still not then a lot has changed in 40 years, and so have the rogue traders. Oh, I was just going to say, we're going to break a lot of people's brains right now because the 80s weren't 20 years ago anymore. They were Don't do that 40. to them. Oh, you had to. Yes, it was 40 <laughs> years ago. And in those 40 years, everything from that original book has been tweaked, changed, expanded on, or just memory hold. We just don't talk about We don't talk about Bruno. I'm we sorry. don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> 40k today we need a real rogue trader named bruno now oh there's the <laughs> styled like in the 80s i mean there's there's an inquisitor my favorite there's an inquisitor out there named obi-wan sherlock Clouseau. Oh. So, still canon <laughs> do with that as you will uh 40k today is so much grimmer and so much darker the aesthetic is actually like you look at a lot of the old rogue trader art and god i want to credit the guy so badly because he is a big part of why 40k looks the way it does, but his name is escaping me. Um, you'll, you'll have to put it up in the show. I'll put it in the show notes. I'll put it up in the video. It's over like that weird, like, uh, um, 19th century, like, military garb where it's, it's all, like, that weird, weird French bicorn, the, the, the long coats. 
And it's not just the Rogue Traders. The, the Imperium widely... It, the aesthetic is still there. It's obvi- obviously been polished. It's been, you know, refined. The, but the 80s the 80s fantasy art is... Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's come a long way. But that, I, that guy has to get his, his, fair, his flowers because a lot of 40K today would not look the same without his work. Um, it is now no longer the Rogue Traders who are the front men in this band. It is the Space Marines... And the wider Imperium that they serve, that's the closest thing to main characters in 40K. Um, And because it's the Space Marines in charge now, we have to deal with their daddy issues all day. (laughs) I'm not joking. A lot of 40K's modern problems are issues with a parental figure. That's it. Call Freud. Call Freud. It's it's a mess. It's no longer just a generic space empire, but it's this massive behemoth that controls a million worlds, and it's all twisted in service to a skeleton on a throne that can do nothing but be a pretty good nightlight. That's it. The universe is actually ripped in half with hell on the other side of it. <laughs> and it doesn't matter which flavor of futuristic sci-fi, whatever future faction you pick, they would be the bad guys in almost any other setting. You could yank almost any faction from 40K and put them in another setting with a little bit of common sense, and everyone would go, oh, you're the bad guys. You're the villain. We, The problem, you need to be dealt with. I'm pretty sure even if you took, like, the Tau and dropped them in the, like, Halo universe, they'd be the exact same as, like, the Covenant. Pretty much. Maybe uh, without the weird, like, religious xeno, xenophobia, but... They'd still be the villains. Humanity, they'd still be the villains. Humanity itself is described as the most brutal regime imaginable, where because of mismanagement and bloat, an environment's been created where human lives are the cheapest currency any government can spend. And boy, howdy, do governments love to spend money. (laughs) It is a joke in 40K that often people love the setting. They do. They love the characters. They find it deeply interesting. You could not pay me to live there. (laughs) No. No, I do not. Thank you. However, if there was a way to live in 40K, rogue traders are pretty much your best bet. Really? Oh yeah, that skeleton is still there. They they it's just been fleshed out over time. They are still free, very free. You can and if you wanted to pick like a any if you wanted to play like 40k as a role playing game, you'd still probably wind up playing as a rogue trader. I'm pretty sure they actually have a role playing game where you just are a rogue trader. They're the most believable bunch to just go off on an adventure because they can. They answer to almost nobody, but they're still part of that Imperium I mentioned earlier so to justify that ability to just go by um, they have this thing called a warrant of trade this is possibly the single strongest sheet of paper in all of 40k uh in in the new game it's (laughs) it's this room sized parchment it's you'll see you'll understand why room size i have a screenshot i'll send you to put up but like we're talking nasa space computer from the 70s, 60s, it's excuse a, me. It's a sheet of paper. Yeah, it's, it's that big, but it's still a sheet of paper. Does it just circle around the room, or is it just like... I'll show you. A good friend of mine... I haven't had a chance to play it, but a good friend of mine has, and he sent me a screenshot. It's great. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Um, So I'll make sure that makes it in. Uh, it's It doesn't matter if you cast scissors, rock. This is winning every time. It's <laughs> a stupid sheet of paper because it immediately elevates whoever has it to the second highest rung on the ladder. Overnight, no, pretty much nobody can question you or even say no to you. Your word is almost the law, and you can take over worlds, you can levy militaries, you can have taxes, you can have your own navy. Yeah, yeah. It'd, be like, it'd be like if you got a letter signed by the president that says, hey, that carrier and its whole battle group are now under your direct control. Just help the U.S. however you see fit. And suddenly, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. You now have a zip code that can take on small countries. That's literally the you are a D&D protagonist paper. Go have fun. Exactly. It's, it's so much fun. I love that. Uh, <laughs> they, it's, <laughs> it's a sheet of paper that just says, I can do whatever I want, period. It's my turn on the Xbox. Get off. <laughs> it's... <laughs> that's my Xbox. Yeah, yeah. And that's not all because it's also generational generational Mm -hmm. if you are good enough to get one of these sheets of paper like if you are remarkable enough 
to have gotten a warrant of trade, you have now basically established a house of old. When you die, it will go to your kid or whoever you designate as your heir. And so they have that power now suddenly. And now I have to ask before we go on, mm -hmm. does Trazen have one of these? Hmm. He's definitely still. It's not impossible is what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but that does mean, since it's hereditary, that there are people who have the ability to do whatever they want, backed with armies and unquestionable authority, by birthright. <laughs> As you can imagine, things can get wacky. That can get to someone's head Oh, very oh yeah, yeah. Wealth, fame, and power, they're, they're, they're nothing but amplifiers on who you are at your core. So if you were a good person before and you suddenly just get stupidly wealthy, you'll be a good person on a level as yet unseen. However, conversely, if you were a bad person before or even kind of sketchy and suddenly you become stupendously wealthy and powerful, <laughs> you're very oh. sketchy now or very awful. Oh, yeah. It gets wild quick <laughs> is what it does. And <laughs> and again, it's like you, you've seen this even in, in the real world, the whole affluenza thing, being born Beyond, in a certain social strata can like warp your view of reality almost. So imagine being born de facto better. You are literally one below the emperor. Yes. Have fun. Well, uh, the emperor is not the highest rung. He's 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 where the ladder's getting to. Mm. There's there's still like you know there's there's administrators, there's custodians, there's there's other people there. The emperor is not the end all be all. I mean he is, but he is. You no, get what he, I mean? He, it's a skeleton. He's not making any decrees for goodness sake. If he was walking, then yes, he would be the highest, and suddenly he'd be the third highest rung on the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> if that's not all bad, I mean if that's not all bad enough, uh. <laughs> not all of these sheets of paper are created equal because newer traders have their paperwork obviously signed by the people running the Imperium, those people at the highest rung of the ladder, the uh, High Lords of Terra, who are just, it's a committee that runs everything in lieu of the Emperor. That's all you need to know. They are comically, they're drawn like, 19, like 1800s robber barons. <laughs> It's really funny, actually. They're also drawn, like, ancient. Like, oh, they've they're old. been there a while. Yeah, but the, the, it's the current leadership that does, you know, hand these out. Because they have the power to hand these out, right? It's If you can get a warrant of trade, it's usually from somebody very high up. That paperwork is hereditary and usually very well kept. It's what gives them all their power. You're obviously going to hang on to it pretty closely. Meaning... Throughout the thousands of years of the Imperium's existence, various rulers have had a chance to sign off or on all of these variance warrants, usually being pretty on par with each other. Because it doesn't matter if it was the guy 500 years ago, 5,000 years ago, or the guy today. He was still the guy in charge. However, there is one signature that towers above all else. <laughs> 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 a signature that cannot be questioned to this day because even though he's a shadow of his former self the emperor still sees all <laughs> imagine the difference between those is just oh yeah i guess it, you get the high lord's terror signature you take what you want and then you see biggie's signature is like huh Oh, oh, hello, a man ordained by God. Take whatever you want. I will give you my firstborn child if you want. Do you, what, what, would you like some tea? Would you like some crumpets? Milk, maybe? Sugar with that? I, mm, whatever you want. Yeah. No, that's that's. Pretty, I was going to say it's like a sheet of paper signed by Washington, but that does not do it justice <laughs> at all. Because in 40K, you're right. The emperor is worshipped like a god, despite desperately not wanting to. <laughs> to be fair... To be fair, he's the guy who chose to walk around in solid gold armor, flaming sword, and a halo above his head. He He's really not doing he the was I'm not, not a god allegations too well. It feels like, oh no, don't worship me, haha. -ha. Unless. <laughs> it kind of feels like that no, sometimes. No, don't worship me. Unless. <laughs> but. Unless. <laughs> that's, he is worshipped no matter how he feels about it. And so it's less like, oh, that guy has paperwork from Washington and more, why is your paperwork signed in Nazareth? <laughs> it's it's that level of ah mm, okay no. where did that come from yeah um it, it's important to note that some some this paperwork can be revoked usually you have to do something outlandish but it can be revoked 
the ones with the emperor's signature, <laughs> good. They'd good have to actively declare war, basically, for that to even be an option. And even then, the most likely thing is they'll just get taken out in the middle of the night. That document will be saved in stasis because it's, it's a holy relic. The emperor signed this with his ink. Like, come on. this It'll go up somewhere and it'll just become a legend of this house that was ordained by the emperor and taken down by chaos itself. <laughs> and that's it. You'll just get memory hold. You, you'll still Mem- go down as memory, noble. Memory cannot say that you turned bad. It can just say you disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter which one you have, though. At the end of the day, they're all very powerful and usually not taken away there are even some signed by the emperor's kids and as you can imagine those ones have a little bit more weight too well th- they were his generals they were supposed to be able to act autonomously yeah. meaning if they needed traitors to go and the whole project was just like listen i am a really big guy but i cannot be everywhere at once so here are 20 here are 20 slides. more of me mm-hmm. <laughs> they they have my they not my power exactly but my uh, logistical power have fun give or take yeah um Though these warrants can be a bit of a white elephant at times. What do you mean by that? Because it's it's an honor to get one. It really is. It's borderline sacred and lets you do anything. It's a fast pass to the good life. There's no debate about it. However, there are always people who want more. And this is only the second highest rung on the ladder. I could be number one. Yeah. Yeah, there are positions that outrank rogue traders, and if you are in competition for one, you want to be a high lord, you want to be an inquisitor, you want to be one of those huge hotshots that nobody can ever question. Sometimes the person who is currently sitting on that chair will look at you and go, hmm, here's your warrant of trade, bye. And you cannot say no. It basically immediately gets you out of the competition. It's politics. It's you have to go do this now. Yeah, because it's forty. You're not in. You're not in my. You're not in my 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 district anymore. Go go do this. This yeah. is your job now. Because forty k at the end of the day is grim and dark, a lot of the time because of human nature and people love positions of power, even if in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter at all. Because let's let's be let's look at it frankly. For a moment here, getting to do whatever the hell you want, having the best of the best when it comes to healthcare and general quality of life is really not that different from getting to do whatever the hell you want and having access to the best of the best when it comes to gear, healthcare and general quality of life. But my chair is an inch taller and I have a really cool hat on. But you have to understand that's such a cool hat, though. But that's the only difference. It's but, not worth these but, but games. It is such a cool hat. That is the exact mentality that gets everyone to bicker and fight and connive around that slightly taller chair. And a really cool hat. Oh, God. Yeah. Nobody ever shoots for second place, at least if you're competent enough to get in those positions, right? It's pretty much always first. So those people in first place use these warrants sometimes as a very quick and dirty just, uh... Get out of my hair. Get out of my hair. (laughs) And... Sometimes they can get really mean about them because they can put conditions on them that make it, they they can say, oh, before this fully activates, you have to go to that specific area and push the boulder up the hill. (laughs) They can say, oh yeah, you get to be a rogue trader, but you always have to check in on these five very annoying worlds for me now forever. (laughs) Or sometimes just effective immediately get lost. That. It's literally a get out of my hair button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get hit with one and there's really nothing you can do about it. It is, I am now a rogue trader. Cool, I guess I will just have to wipe my tears with hundreds. <laughs> it's the definition of a gilded cage. Uh, also, side note, while I couldn't find a hard source confirming this, I usually try my best for these. Uh, I did find something that would make the original rogue traders, the seal from the emperor, that much scarier because uh some places were saying that the whole reason this whole operation started was for the emperor to get rid of old houses that would have been problematic to him (laughs) that's so that means the original families that got that sign time is a flat circle yeah and uh, the emperor is smart enough to go yeah okay this is a brilliant idea move you you can't counter this listen i kill two birds with one stone i get these idiots out of my hair and they're still useful to me again sweet (laughs) take it with a grain of salt nothing's canon everything is true 
what we do know for a fact that is beyond debatable is the space they're usually sent to horrific it's a dang it's it really is a dangerous job like sure they're crying with hundreds but it's still you can die you're crying with hundreds but like you're in the middle of a massive war front yeah yeah it's why they have as much power as they do they need it uh, my favorite quote that shows it is uh, the warrant of trade and a starship to enforce it. Those are the critical tools for a rogue trader. <laughs> Without the former, he's merely a renegade. Without the latter, he's just a forsaken drifter. <laughs> they are in the most dangerous pits of space and they have to make do. It's actually where the game takes place. Horrifically dangerous areas that are untamed that are racked with storms left right and center and it's these guys jobs to rein it in they have to tame the untamable and exploit it for all the resources it has available before moving on forever until they pass it down to their kids that's it it's also why they're given some of the most hypocritical powers in the whole imperium because if your average peasant finds a weapon made by chaos or aliens they are getting black bagged. Their whole family is getting black bagged. Their every, all their friends are getting taken to. It's they they don't play when it comes to it. Just like okay, how many degrees of separation before we stop seeing chaos infestation? <laughs> but rogue traders will just have alien gear on them. They will walk up. Just why not? No, they will walk up to space marines wearing full blown alien gear and go, "Oh no, I got this." Let me tell you, it's a really fun story. And their foreheads are not immediately pressed in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's. <laughs> Do people who see that have to get black bagged? No, it's the rogue trader ship. Doesn't matter. And it's, it's on one side, it's rogue trader ship. On the other side, it's space marines. Both of them are cleared enough to see this, so it's okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, and that's not even the the weirdest stuff they do because they have an aesthetic. By the way. They are some of the coolest looking people in all of 40K. So I've seen one where they've, they've properly had like an alien wrapped around their shoulder as a scarf. Others wearing finery from dead alien civilizations. Dude, they, are, they risk life and limb just for drip. That's it. Things that would get everyone else pretty much immediately removed from history for, they just wear because they can. They have... <laughs> They have spoken to, made deals with, hung around, and even contracted, paid, and protected aliens. And nobody can question them. Do you want to know where I got this scarf? It, it was my Tao mistress. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so long as you didn't leak any Imperium secrets and you've always been paying your taxes on time, they don't care. They don't, they do not, they can't question you. You are, <laughs> so so long as you are doing your baseline job of expanding the Imperium's borders, finding new cool stuff, and paying your taxes, that's it. Nothing else matters. And so you have so many different ways to do this gig that, again, you can you can very easily see this is like the, the archetypal event. The arch this is this is D&D &D in space. Yeah, exactly. Some rogue traders are missionaries. They're going door to door to spread the good word of the emperor. Others take a, they pride themselves on diplomacy first because they're in the far reaches of space, even beyond the Imperium. There's a good chance they're first contact. So a lot of the time, they'll actually be fairly kind to aliens when they first meet them. And these are the guys who will, actually my favorite one, is they've provided a full-blown armed escort for aliens multiple times. Because even they know if you go anywhere near the wrong Imperial commander, you'll just get shot at. So let's let's just, let's, let's like just put, move information. Put, put, you, put you in the box yeah. that they can't see. No, 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 no. They can see. Oh. They, they can see it. It's okay. just put you in the Pope mobile. Mm -hmm. We'll move you through, and mm -hmm. then we'll ask you questions. It's more like, and then you'll just pay me for this gig. Oh. It, it doesn't have to be as important as I'll interrogate you. It can just be, we're good friends. I'll do this favor for you. That they're 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 genuinely very diplomatic. At their, some of these diplomats have taken steps on Eldar worlds, which is a huge deal because the space elves are hoity and toity. They think they're better than everyone else. So for them to let a human walk That's along, it's a big their, deal. It's a really big deal. It's a huge deal. Um, there are others that are the exact polar opposite. They're like, you want me to expand the Imperium? I'll expand it by force. <laughs> it's it's like that uh 
list of cornate massacres. You can help by expanding it. <laughs> so they they just take world after world after world, and it's the it's just a conqueror moving in a straight line, pretty much. Um, there are others who are just pirates in space. They swash buckles. They buckle swashes. You know what this whole shtick is. There are and then there are the actual rogue traders who simply just care about commerce that's it they check their bank account every morning and they have a net worth plaque they specked into the trade part of rogue traders yeah no and then there are complete and utter whack jobs who would be clinically insane anywhere else but because 40k is so twisted there are actually some positions where having a complete disregard for human decency dignity and life actually kind of make you better at your job and so they get away with it despite being the they should be institutionalized they are actually crazy you're an awful person but you're great at 40k yeah it's because corruption is rife in 40k it's everywhere it doesn't matter if you declare yourself emperor for life on that planet did you still pay the smothering tithe okay sweet i don't care are you still conquering more worlds okay sweet i don't care just keep it pushing there's other much bigger problems than that guy in a corner. So let's <laughs> just move along. Just move along. Yeah. These guys have had the emperor's own sons ask them to do a task. And their first question is, what's the paycheck looking like? <laughs> to ask that of a primarch. Yeah. Like, what's the pay looking like? Because they don't do any work for free. They've called them by their first names, which will get you killed if you do that to the wrong one, by the way. For sure. No, like, some of them do not like that at all. Huh. Yeah, some of them are very authoritarian. You call me, you know, like... Rogue Trader just walks into uh, uh, the Imperial Fortress. Oh, hey, Rogel. Uh, it, it's actually even worse than that, because it's not just, oh, I called you by your first name. Uh, and the, to give you a sense of scale, by the way, the Emperor's sons have titles that put Edie and me to shame. I mean, it's it's... These are... These are generals who have been serving for thousands of years. They've earned every title imaginable. If you were to sit here and list them all day, it would be an episode unto itself. They have walked up to these larger-than-life demigods who can punch through concrete walls and can move faster than a human can keep track of. Have misted space marines. And they don't call them by their first name. They call them by the nickname their mom calls them. And they didn't immediately die over that. The stones on these guys. These, to be fair, they did it to the most well-adjusted one. But still. <laughs> I'd like to see them try Angron nowadays. No, no, it would not work at all. <laughs> there's 101 ways to be a rogue trader because there's 101 ways you can become one. Anyone can technically be one. It's not always a political white elephant to get him out of my hair. It can be a reward for being a very, very impressive commander. It could be a reward for, you know, leading ma massive naval battles that succeed. You could just be the richest guy on a planet and everyone goes, dang, okay, sure, here you go. Clearly, you know a little something about commerce. Like, you can, it, it, you, do you see the D&D? Like, I, can, I can see the D&D You D &D can have any background possible it's the perfect template for an adventurer there are crime lords there are wealthy nobles or high-ranking members of the church anyone can be a rogue trader you can have any background yeah but not everyone is and that's a very important thing because uh they do have armies they do have ships that are all crewed by people there's a lot of people around a rogue trader you brought this up earlier how do they not immediately die and it's because they are not rogue traders that's a very important thing to note. It's only the captain that gets that title. So if something happens to him, suddenly you need to be memory hold. <laughs> it's actually very, it's a very good way to keep them obscenely loyal because I like being able to do whatever the hell I want. I really like being able to do whatever the hell I want. The only reason I can do whatever the hell I want is because that guy can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. And if that guy dies... <sighs> yeah. And so they will protect them with their own lives. The only person who gains from backstabbing is the heir apparent. That's it. Because, well, it's old-timey royal. You, get, you know what it is. Like, oh, I am prince. I wish to be king. Yeah. It's my turn on the Xbox father. <laughs> I, I hate how well you did that. But yes, that is exactly <laughs> why... 
Uh, <laughs> no, I will not accept player two. I must have the player one controller. Yeah. You you have stories like that where a rogue trader gets done in by their very, very annoying son. Uh, <laughs> um, and on top of that, all that staff they have on board, they can and also have space marines as part of the staff occasionally. Because, and I'll be fair, it's usually temporary. It's usually temporary because rogue traders are out in the vast, deep reaches of space. You can find all kinds of wacky stuff there that nobody else has found. And so, like, you could find a planet made of diamond through and through. Huh. That's it. And so, space marines do need resources to continue to function. So, usually what will happen is a rogue trader will just gift them to a space marine and just say... Yeah, you can have these. I know you guys are really good people, and I know you will be there for me if I'm ever truly up against the wall. Wink, wink. And nudge, nudge. Yeah. And then, because Space Marines, I will give them very, very much credit here. Uh, they live and die by their word. So when a Space Marine agrees to do that, they will be there for you. So a lot of the time, people will be pressing a rogue trader, and it, it'll look really rough for them. And then suddenly, bam, a barge full of super soldiers appears. <laughs> tanks with legs yeah tanks on two legs and you just have to cope with that and i think they run faster than tanks too like, space marines yeah but they scared. got the armaments of a tank yeah space marines are mortifying <laughs> and the arms of a tank yeah so uh, that's why you really do not want to give rogue traders too hard of a rough time the power that they have is truly laughable <laughs> however that does raise the question what are they doing with it today? What are they doing with it today? Whatever the hell they want. Oh. Roll credits. I mean, it's it's, 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 it's the D and D characters. Who da thunk? They're yeah. doing D and D things. What are D and D things? What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> the the galaxy is more torn apart than ever. Entire worlds are completely inhabitable that were once just fine. Others have just vanished. They've just gone, and there are forces that are straining and creating new hot spots and gold mines to be explored. So the rogue traders are off just doing that in full force. They are, they've found full-blown STCs. They've found full-blown houses of knights just hidden in the dark. You don't know how powerful that is, but that'll come up later. Uh, others have found the equivalent of those planets made of diamond through and through. <laughs> And while it may be terrible for everyone else, this gilded elite are raking it in, hand over fist, despite the fact that your average Joe is kind of going through it right now. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Regardless of that complete impossibility, some things we do know for a fact are one of the Emperor's kids is back, the resident paper pusher, and he called a meeting of a hundred of the oldest and most powerful of these rogue trader houses. And, keynote, they could have ignored that. They didn't have to follow that. They didn't have to. They can do whatever the hell they want. It's like, oh, a summons, stack it with the rest of them. But, I mean, to be fair, this is such a rare thing that they're like, all right, well, I suppose let's go check this It was out. more of a, I'm interested in this thing mm -hmm. than a, I have to follow this order. Exactly. And um, they all attended... I'm fairly certain the sheer net worth in that room was probably enough to bend light itself because it wasn't just one of the Emperor's kids who we can assume is loaded by birthright. Let's be real here. Gilliman does not have to pay bills, even though he'd be the best at it. He would have a budget. <laughs> but these, all these old houses are the power brokers of the Imperium. They are the elite of the elite, and they're all gathered in one room. <laughs> and basically, Gilliman said, things are tough, but it's also a great time to go explore and get new stuff. It's, it's a new golden age, so get to it. Go do the thing. The Legos are on the floor. Rebuild them, please. Don't please. step on them. Please. <laughs> and so they have set forth to rebuild this really, really broken Imperium, making stupendous amounts of money while they do this. <laughs> All while looking amazing, by the way, because like I, like I said, they're... calling it drip is an understatement. They are a tsunami. <laughs> they are stunning. They have an aesthetic to them, dude. It's... <laughs> it's... <laughs> 
they there are new things constantly poking their heads in, and almost none of them are friendly to the Imperium. But your average rogue trader just needs a new blazer, and he's gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> the forty k forty k is miserable. There's there's no debate on that. But these guys have it pretty good. These guys have it pretty sweet. This shawl was made of authentic necro necrodermis. Yeah. <laughs> They would totally have that, by the way. That's not that far off. Uh, <laughs> these guys are something truly rare because it's one of the only things in the entire setting that is A, untouched and happy from its original iteration, for the most part. They're still a little jacked up. <laughs> and B, they've pretty much survived. I mean, the bombs from the beginning and the rogue trader it's, today it's, it's, is still pretty much the same thing it's you can see it's the same skeleton that was there 40 years ago just refined to fit into this a lot better and a lot smoother they're no longer the shining jewel at the center of it all obviously but they're still some of the most interesting and that's what really matters it's why they've recently gotten the game all to themselves dude very there's so much in 40k that doesn't even come close to being interesting enough to have a game now what do you think about them i think they're really cool I, again, 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 the concept. I'm very new to TTRPGs uh, mm -hmm. because my first experience with them was awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's really, really nice to see. It's really, really nice to see the the the, the open ended, just like go off and do an adventure kind of style mm -hmm. in, in different different IPs. It's it's really cool. It le leaves room for. It's really difficult when like you have an IP and they really hard set the rules so nothing can be like done outside of this is exactly what happened this is exactly what happened and then this happened but just like leaving the room for especially in an infinite galaxy leaving the room for people to just do what they want just adventure just like do whatever it's really cool yeah no the, the, and i i the thing i love the most about them is how much they've stayed pretty true to themselves it's not a joke literally last week's episode is a great example of how 40k can change a lot over time like the space dwarves kind of just got retconned in the hardest way imaginable <laughs> yeah. but that never happened to the rogue traders they never felt the need to do this to them i mean sure they got sidelined a little bit but it, it all they were stayed. still doing their thing even on the sidelines yeah because they totally would be doing their own thing off on the sidelines go on they're, they're, they are so much fun now it's time Back by popular demand, it is the Foreign Fracas. Or International yeah. Incident. It's a working title. That's the full title. Months later, you still haven't forgotten. Uh, every week, for those of you who were not around for this, most of you were actually, uh, we give a little bit of a shout out to the country that streamed us the most across all platforms. So we don't just look at YouTube, we look at Apple Music, Spotify, Google Podcast, whatever. If, if you listen to us, we get the numbers because... They're the internet, just there. The internet's a fantastic place. And it's also because I personally, A, love travel a lot, and B, it's a small way to say thanks because like, none of this is possible without all of you. And so this week's winners, by a slim margin, by the way. A slim margin? 0.5%. Damn. It was neck and neck between the UK and the best coast. <laughs> the West Coast. No, I'm, I'm not joking. It was something... The UK was consistent and then i don't know what was going on i don't know if people were streaming us in their sleep on loop but suddenly tuesday ish it just started to climb and climb and climb, and climb and climb and climb and climb and it has not stopped so to be fair very close it's but okay pacific northwest wise mm -hmm. very close to england the uk i hope you don't mean geographically Oh, no, not geographically. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not that dumb. <laughs> the, when I tell you the speed with which I drew a line from each coast of the U.S. <laughs> to the U.K., mm -mm. The, the, the speed with which two red lines immediately left New York and Seattle to see which one would get to the U.K. first, and then a massive question mark appeared in my mind, I was about to question... All of your geography education. No, no. Over. I'm night. smart enough with geography to know that's not I was it. More, I know. It just. It just <laughs> but no, uh, cl climate wise, climate I've, wise. I've heard, I've heard, because I've not actually been to the UK, but I've talked to people who have lived there, mm -hmm. and um, they have said that it's very close environmentally. Just like a whole bunch of rain, 
Well, the Pacific Northwest is odd because it has almost every biome imaginable. It really so, does. I don't know. What I will say is today we're going to uh, – what I'm going to be doing from now on for the various segments of the U.S. is we're going to focus on a state and then that state's shelved forever. <laughs> It'll still go to your coast, but we'll have to mention one of the other states. Until it creates a new fun fact. That is your goal. If you live in one of these states that gets black bagged, create a new fun fact. Don't say that. (laughs) Florida exists. We have a lot of awesome people who listen to us from Florida. They have a variant of the Joker running around. We don't need another Florida zombie. Thank you. So don't create new (laughs) fun facts. With the exception of Florida. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But... um, we will give it to the single most populous state in the West Coast, California. Yep. Yeah, obviously. It, yep. Um, <laughs> that would do it. it. It is A, the highest and the lowest point in the continental United States, which is really wild to think it's about. It's jarring. Right? Yeah. And um, my favorite thing is there are, I think there's a herd of about 150 zebra, perfectly native to California right now. What? Yep. I think 155. No, maybe I actually failed geography because those aren't close. Zebras don't come from there, do they? You are so correct. You're so real, bestie. (laughs) But uh you must remember, money doesn't care about distance. Uh, uh. And so in the same way Pablo Escobar introduced hippos to South America, and and very... And Fidel Castro brought so many cows into Cuba. Apparently, he made the single, if I remember correctly, through like a lot of modification and trying, Fidel Castro made the cow that produces the most milk, period. He created the cow that makes the most milk, period. And if I remember correctly, he created the tastiest ice cream as well. Well, I don't know about all that. Now, we'll let the CIA decide that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But the zebras in California got there because there was a newspaper magnate who had a zoo and things were going great the 30s hit things were not going great anymore (laughs) the bad times Uh, happened the start of every good american story the 30s yeah and so everything fell apart that was not essential obviously the zoo is not one of them and while unfortunately not a lot of the animals there survived the zebra got out and they've just been fine to be fair, to be fair, they come from Africa. They have to deal with lions. California doesn't even have bears anymore. They're fine. I mean, they've got. I they promise got, you, they right still now, got they still got cougars, don't I they? I promise you, right now, a cougar does not have half the venom of a lion. No, it doesn't have the half the venom of a lion, but it does. It's not even close. You have to know that at least one cougar has tried and maybe failed. Gotten its teeth pushed in. I promise you that now. I promise you that now there's a reason every time you hear a story starting with an african animal taken out of africa it succeeds wildly <laughs> those okay that, that is a weird confluence of like i don't know what it is about like animals south of the hemisphere i'm gonna give love to australians too you oh, guys oh, have australian, weird animals australian wildlife is a different weirdly one. tough animals africa does too if you look at the, the hippo the hippo everybody's like oh cute they kill how many people a year well, it's the speed that gets me. I don't like how fast that thing is. It's like bears. Bears, I don't mind very much until you find out they're faster than you. Then suddenly the dynamics change. There's this fun YouTube short I saw a while ago of somebody feeding uh, watermelons to a hippo. And uh, everybody in the comments was like, oh, that's adorable. Oh, that's adorable. And I'm like, that's, can- a, that's a head. Yeah, you can. That, totally- did you see how easily that thing, that thing, that thing crunched an entire watermelon like i would crunch a dorito hippos do not you can put up a little box with a video on it too like because they kind of need to see it It, it's easy it looks so easy and that's not that's not adorable that's deadly i've always maintained humans are not at the top of the food chain a human with a gun (laughs) is at the top top of the food food chain chain. if you if you don't have that (laughs) You are very much so still on the food pyramid for something. And even then, you still have to have good aim. Otherwise, you've just pissed it off. It depends. Because do I need aim if I have a minigun? Like, let's be real. There's a certain point where sheer volume of fire will win. That's well, why a human with a gun. You do have to still have a good control of the recoil and also a little bit of aim. Otherwise, you get like Sea of Thieves peace balled. 
<laughs> okay, we're going to end on that note. <laughs> A big thank you to all of you listening from California, and thank you to all of you that have made it to the end of the episode. There is a video, because you know you guys made it, so you get a little secret announcement. Um, Secret, most of you make it to the end. It's not going to be a secret at all. (laughs) There is a video in the works that may or may not come out, but if you would like to be featured in it, be sure to leave a comment with what your biggest win this year was. Whatever you're proudest of, I don't care what it is, no matter how small it may feel to you, if it was a big win for you, Drop it in the comments. I want to try and do a celebration thing for all of you because, like I said, you guys are the amazing people that make this all possible. So, like I said, it's something in the works. Might not be this year, might be next year, but um, thank you to all of you who have dropped that in the comments below. And thank you, as always, for being you. Thank you.